Hello, I'm David Ya. Avaya, what saith the scripture? I wanted to share with you something very significant that I found that does support the belief that the King James Version with 66 books was used for a season, about 400 years, by Yah to preserve truth, but that now it is time to exodus from the King James Version with 66 books to the Et Sefer with 87 books. Now, here is the proof. I went to go look up the word blind. I'll show you. I went to go look this up to add, well, Yah put on my heart to go look up a scripture to add for, under my descriptions for, I have a playlist called 12 Disciples on the What Saith the Scripture YouTube channel. So, as I went to go edit the 12 Disciples description for the playlist, Yah told me to go add a verse here. He told me to put a verse here. Insert a verse for the verse um, about the blind leading the blind. They both fall into a ditch. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll do that. By the way, I'm enjoying a Sabbath rest today from sunset yesterday begins the new day. And how do we know that? The scriptures say the evening and the morning, the first day, the evening and the morning, the second day. That's how we know how Yah keeps track of his days. It's in the word. The evening and the morning, the first day. The evening and the morning, It's actually like this. It starts at like 6 p.m. about, which is the number of man. Between 6 and 7, or 6 and 8, which you got number of man, God's number of completion, and new birth, number 8. So I believe sunset or is usually between 6 and 8. So look at the perfection of Yah in everything he does and how it relates to numbers, biblical numerology. So now check this out. The evening, by the way, the Jewish culture observes hours by watches, and there's four watches. The first watch is three hours, the second watch is another three hours, the third watch, and then the fourth watch, and then the, it starts over again for the morning. So you got the first watch in the morning it's from 6 a.m., to 9 a.m., second watch, 9 a.m. to 12 noon, third watch, noon to 3, fourth watch, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Now, I don't know if they have a watch during the daytime, but I know at night they call it the watch. Interesting how we have a watch on our wrist now which takes our focus away from the Jewish calendar and puts it on our wrist, which is kind of like traps us and binds us like fetters around our wrist to enslave us, to be away from thinking about the Judaish, the calendar of the Yahudim. And even the word Jew doesn't have Yah in it, but Yahudim does the word Yahudim, Yahud, the Jude. Yeah, let's get back to the Hebrew roots and understand that Abba Yah is our Father God. Abba Yah. You don't have to receive this if you don't want to, but you're going to be missing out. Because if you don't exodus from the King James Version, which 66 books, 
you'll be the blind leading the blind, and both will fall into a ditch. That's symbolic of going to hell. Don't believe me? Watch what happened when I search for the word blind. Which, by the way, 66 books in the King James Version, the number of man twice, once for man and once for God, because he loves us. But think about this. The King James Version is like the Old Covenant. It's time to get out of it and get into the Etzefer, which is the renewed covenant. It's got 87 books, which this is what happens when you look up the word blind. Look up the word blind in the King James Version. And how many books? I'm going to do it again for you to see it. So you don't think I'm playing trickery here. Do it yourself, too, to find out. Blind. King James Version search. Look at the results. 87. 87 times the word blind is in the King James Version. There are 87 books in the Et Sefer. Now look, there's 31 books in the Old Testament, 56 in the New. Three is symbolic of, well, what we used to think of the Trinity, which isn't what we were taught in the Christianity, but it is that there are three representations of Yah. And then also he is three in one. But he's also two in one too. Depends on how you look at him. But he is three in one. But now let's also look at the new covenant. Five and six. The number five and six. We know six is the number of man. But number five. Let's look that up together. And that way you can learn how to do this too. We look up the number five. See, I'm learning with you as I do this. This is how the dedicated spirit, the rock, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's like the Rahakat Kadesh, um, that what we would used to call the Holy Spirit is the dedicated spirit of Yah and Yahshua. Yah sent the spirit of his son into your hearts. He is the Ra Ha Kodesh, the Holy Spirit, the dedicated spirit. So this is what's going on with looking up the biblical, biblical number. I just put biblical five. We gotta put I think biblical meaning. Okay, let's try that. Biblical meaning, five. Boom. Um, there's one website in particular. I don't suggest this one, Astro Vera. Ew. Um, you can read that, but it's not going to be as accurate. There's another site. Or See, now it's not even coming up as the main one. All right. So what I'll have to do is say, we could read this for now. The number five in the Bible is significant because his creation, the man has five fingers, five senses, and five toes. Okay, so this has given us a good definition so far. But I'll tell you why I don't recommend it. Astro Vera. That's not necessarily biblical through and through. But let's look so far. The number five in the Bible is significant because his creation, the man has five fingers, five senses, and five toes. Thus, it is the number of God's grace. Whoa. There are five great mysteries, Father, Son, Spirit, creation, and redemption. 
Gematria is the name given to the process of assigning numbers to different words. Gematria, which is kind of what we're doing, but check this out. This is how we'll find it. But in so, so far, we know that is accurate. So five is grace, considering with man, God's grace toward man. And look at this, 56. It's right in there, brethren. God's grace towards man. God, three in one, God's grace toward man. Now, I didn't know I was going to find that with you, but I did. And here is the other thing about the biblical meaning of five. The only way I know how to get to it quickly is I have links that I've saved. And so I'll look those up in my, I use Google Drive to keep things where I can go in and edit them easily. Then I copy and paste them into other documents or other places on the, on the internet. That way you don't get bumped out of YouTube and then it's lost. If you're trying to put a comment on YouTube and all of a sudden you, the website's gone for some reason, you click off of it. Now all your whole comments disappeared. I suggest editing in Google Drive first. Um, but you know, that's just what I do. You do it however you want, but I'm just sharing with you tools that I've learned over many years. I used to work for Google, but praise Yah, I don't anymore. Uh, so Yah is good. Now, let's check this out. I'm going to look up. I'm scrolling down. You know, I got nothing to hide here. You can see what I'm scrolling down. Pause it. Look at my, uh, the way I do things is um, to keep things in order. I'll put, hey, here's the title of what I'm doing, and I highlight it. And then to separate it from whatever else I'm doing, I'll, at the end of it, look at this long one here. See snow. At the end of it, I put the same thing. I just copy and paste it, highlight it, and then I put two underlined signs to let me know that it's at the end of what I was saving. So... It's just a, a way I organize things because part of the way I organize is not to organize. I just save it, keep it editing, and I edit on the top of things. Because you're going to find in life a lot of stuff that you think is important is not. It's irrelevant. It's time to just get away from it and delete it or forget about it. You know what Yah had me do for boot camp training and spiritual training recently? I recorded 105 videos of the King James Version. I had day, days 1 through 100, over 100 hours, about 100 hours of recording, 100 hours of recording. And then a few days ago, Yah told me, delete them all. It's the King James Version. It's going to deceive the masses. On faith, I just deleted them. I didn't care. How many people you know would have a ministry? Say, for example... I love Robert Breaker. He's a brother in the Lord. He's got hundreds and hundreds of videos. If Yah told him, delete them all, do you think he would? I don't know. Maybe he would. But it's just really hard for most people when they build their whole ministry around something, like the King James Version, it's hard for them to say, look, I was wrong. But see, it doesn't mean they were wrong. You got to realize this. You can understand the truth. Yah told me it's not wrong to have used the King James Version while it was available, but it is wrong now to keep teaching out of it when you know that there is a renewed covenant through the Et Sefer that's got all the books of the Bibles, hidden books, restored Hebrew names, 87 books, which we just did the search for blind leading the blind into a ditch. From 66 books in the King James Version to 87 books. 87 books in the Et Sefer. 87 results for the word blind. You think that's a coincidence? Are you kidding me? Think about it, brethren. This is proof from Yah himself. And I just found out about this today with you. Well, not with you, but I'm sharing it with you as I found out about it. So, brethren... Let's look up that number five, and then let's see about praying and closing. The meanings of numbers. I got number one there, number two, number six. 
This was from other things that um, I have copied and pasted. Now the reason I'm scrolling down is just to see if the number five was available. Number six, number two, number one. Okay, that's for that. Okay, cool. So check this out. What we're going to do is we're going to take the link to a resource that I know is good. If you notice these links here, I use bit.ly to shorten the links. Um, I can show you that real quick too. But let's first just go to why I recommend this resource for the resource for biblical numerics. It's under biblestudy.org. So it's biblestudy.org. And then it's got the rest here. Bible ref slash meaning of numbers in Bible slash. But you know, you can always follow the links off of my YouTube channel to it. But what I'm trying to say is this. When we look at the number five on this one, let's read this and see how much more wisdom we get from it than just that first, I want to say superficial meaning because there's going to be a deeper biblical meaning in this one here, I found to be the case. Number five, whoa, look at all that. Let's read it, see what the Lord has for, for grace. Regarding man, God's grace toward man. The number five symbolizes God's grace, goodness, and favor toward humans. And if you've heard me before, I don't like the word human. It's not a Bible word. Man is, but human, the word hu, H-U, is an Egyptian god. So they're brainwashing you, mind control, to think that you're an Egyptian god, man. Don't buy the lie. Who's they? Satan and everyone that follows him. Whether they know or they follow him or not. I've come to understand that there is truth in this world and there's lies. And you're either going to get saved from the lies. You're either going to be a child of Abba Father. Or you're already, well first off, you're born into, you're born as a son of the devil. Your father is the devil when you're born in your fallen state. So by your fallen state nature, you are born into where you're a son of the devil. Whether you think you're a good person or not, you think, oh, I'm better than other people. Hey, I'm studying the King James Bible. I'm good. Maybe you are, maybe. But, you know, Yahuwah said, Yahshua said that no one's good except God. And so, and it's not even God, it's Yah. So but here we go. The number five, God's great. Oh, so you're either born as a son of, you're born into being a son of the devil where your father is the father of lies and you're a son of the devil. Or if you get saved, which you better really study what getting saved is because it's not as simple as you might think. It is and it isn't. So study, you know, what the, what Yah puts out there because there's a lot of deception going on to a lot of people. And then you get to be a son of Yah, Abba Yah. You're either a son of Abba Yah or you're a son of the devil, Satan, El Shatan. So now let's find out about this. The number five symbolizes God's grace, goodness, and favor toward man. And is mentioned 318 times in scripture. Whoa. Three, the Trinity or God, three in one. God is one and eight is the rebirth for eternity. You take that number eight. It's after the seventh day of the week, which was completion and perfection. Eight is the new birth. It's symbolic of being born again. And then nine is fruitfulness, which is what you're going to have for eternity. But you put eight on its side, and you have eternity, the symbol of eternity or infinity. So 
Five is the number of grace, and multiplied by itself, which is 25, is grace upon grace. John 1, 16. You have to study that on your own. The Ten Commandments contain two sets of five commandments. Wow. The first five commandments are related to our treatment and relationship with God, with Yah. Yah. And the last five, and the last five concern our relationship with other men. Appearances of the number five. But so far I do like the other definition that was Googled first that popped up because it went right into how a man has five finger, five f digits on his hand, feet, etc. So that was cool or that was very uh, 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 eye-opening appearances of the number five there are five primary types of offerings god commanded israel to bring to him i didn't know that there's so much i don't know they are the burnt offering leviticus one you look at those numbers yourself i'm going to go a little faster they are the burnt offering sin trespass grain and peace offering Burnt, sin, trespass, grain, peace. Wow. The book of Psalms is divided into five major sections. Section 1, Psalm 1 to 41, refers to the Passover, Israel's beginning, and the start of God's plan of salvation that centers around Yahshua, Messiah, not Christ, Mashiach. Section 2, 42 through 72, signs about a unified Israel, Israel, in the land, and pictures the creation of the New Testament church. The word church is deceptive. A called out one. The called out ones has been throughout all of Scripture. And it's the renewed covenant. Not new, it's renewed. Section 3 bemoans the destruction of both God's temple and Jerusalem. Yah's temple and Yerushalem. Yerushalem, I don't know how to pronounce it in the, in the Hebrew yet. Yerushalem. Um, this section also hints at prophecies regarding the end time great tribulation, which we also should know better. It's the time of Jacob's trouble or Jacob's trouble. Jacob, don't say Jacob. Yah is in Jacob's name. Wow. The end time, Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble. Section 4, 90 through 106, rejoices over the 1,000 reign of Yahshua. And so and shows Yisrael gathered again. This is the one thousand rain eight up here. You know about uh, the seven thousand year history of man. There's only been six thousand years completed so far. We're about to go into the seven thousandth year where actually that's going to be the 1,000 year reign, is the seventh year. It's actually a day of Sabbath rest for us. And I believe we'll be resting physically inside of Yah. What do I mean by that? The revelation he gave me was in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. Well, think about this. In your twinkling of an eye, from a moment for the rapture, where all of a sudden you close your eyes and you're, or you don't even close your eyes, it's that fast. You all of a sudden pop up inside of what some people think of a resurrected body. Think about this. It says that we shall be like him. What if we're exactly like him for a little bit, for the thousand year reign? What if we are actually inside of him? All 
200 million believers inside of Yahshua, looking out. Pray about it. And then after the thousand year reign, what if he has us all come back out afterward? And for eternity, then we're out with our own physical bodies. Now, during that thousand year reign, when we're inside him, because it says that we will be seated in his throne with him. How are 200 million believers going to sit in his throne with him? Unless we're all inside of him. And perhaps during that thousand year reign, while we're all inside of him, those that got saved during the, what you want to call the called out age, we call it the church age, but this age of being in, where we're the body. It says it in the word, brethren, we're the body of Christ. What, the body of Messiah. What if that becomes reality where we are literally inside his body? In Messiah. In your King James, it keeps saying, in Christ, in Christ. Paul kept saying we're in Christ. It's a great mystery. This is a mystery. The marriage, they become one flesh. What if we become one flesh with him, where we're in him, in Christ, in Christ, one flesh, one flesh. It's a great mystery. I don't speak about the husband and wife. It's about Christ. It's a great mystery. What if this is the great mystery revealed? That we will be one flesh with Messiah inside of him. Watch the video. Click on and look up the, the, the video. It's a secular movie. Watch the, the trailer for, and then watch the whole movie if you want to, you know, with godly, with prayer. And look at the revelation that Satan reveals about a truth. It's the movie Being John Malkovich. I'll let you watch that on your own and get some, let the Ha Raha Kadesh teach you, the dedicated spirit teach you about that in that movie, what happens. It's the only movie of its kind. I've never seen another movie like it where, well, I'm not going to tell you. You go find out yourself. Now, uh, let's see about this. Oh, by the way, while we're in Messiah, seated in his throne in a Sabbath rest, unable to sin. Makes sense, doesn't it? If we're inside him, looking out. Now, we wouldn't be looking at each other like, hey, guys, how y'all doing? No, it's just it would be like you're consciously aware and you're in him looking out his eyes, everyone at the same time, but all in him, just like he's all in us at once. But while you're looking out, you feel what he feels. You know what he knows. You think what he thinks. You see what he sees. You are in him as he's doing everything, but you're not in control of it. Therefore, unable to sin. And the others that are out would be his, the people that got saved before us, before the cross. And maybe the ones that are getting saved after the rapture. It's a beautiful revelation and it makes the scriptures all coalesce and make sense. So far, I haven't seen uh, anything that would go against this theory. And uh, I would love for someone to come and I've, I've shared it with a couple of people. They don't even, people haven't said anything to me about it, whether they make sense to them or not. But pray and read the scriptures afterward and see if it doesn't make sense. And we're talking about end time revelation here, folks. And so let's conclude with what this says here. There are five books of God's law. Oh, important to observe the Torah, which doesn't mean law. It's teaching. I'm not going to spell it out too, too big. Well, uh, let's see. Teaching. Oh, no. This, this tool is, I couldn't make the tool smaller, but I don't want to. I guess I'll show you how to do that. The, the palette tool, you can click on it. And say I want this tool to write smaller. I want it to write in this color. And then you say okay. So then let's see Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. In fact, I should remember to do that each time. When you close out the app, you got to remember to make the tool smaller again. So five books of the law. But it's not law and it's not God. It's Yah's. It's, it's kind of like Yah's way, the way, but it also means teaching. 
which is the way. So I would say this is awesome. Yah just revealed to me. You could say that it's not God's law, it's Yah's way. <laughs> he just taught me that too right now, y'all. <laughs> so Yah is teaching me as he teaches you. It's an amazing revelation here. I never, this is just the only way you get it is from the dedicated spirit of Yahshua. It's commonly referred to as the Pentateuch. Penta means five. And also, while we're on the word pent, think about this. Pent. Yah showed me a while ago the word penthouse. You know, when you look at that root word, it's like, well, wait a minute. And pardon my sloppy writing here. I'm trying to use a stylus to write with, and it's not coming out that great. But think about this, the word penthouse. You think, oh, well, it means five house. Mm, not really. A penthouse is up high. A penthouse is up high. So Yah showed me that it's an up house. A penthouse is an up house. And then Yah told me the word repent. You could look at the word pent meaning up. And re could mean to turn. Or to look. Up. Look up. For your redemption, your redemption draweth nigh. Let's close in prayer. Avaya, we love you. We worship you. Help us to follow Yah's law. No, rather Yah's way. The way of Yahashua. Help us to follow your way. Abba Yah, give us wisdom for your glory in Yahashua's precious name. Thank you, Abba Yah. And thank you for this glorious Shabbat Shalom. Hey, Shabbat 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 Shalom. Hey, I love you all. Yah bless you. Shalom.